Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to begin the funeral service. We ask for those that have a cell phone or pager, if you could turn it to the silent mode. Officiating is Rabbi Ari Hart. This is an impossible day. None of us could imagine being here, but here we are, devastated, heartbroken, confounded. As we remember the life of an extraordinary human being, Oliver Leopold, son of Mary and Alexander, brother of Miles, grandson of Roland and Ellen Brown, Carolyn Kaplan, and Thomas and Janet Leopold. Beloved family member, student, colleague, teacher, healer, friend, role model, and so much more. Oliver's tragic death happened shortly after the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah ended. And Hanukkah is a holiday about light and darkness. It starts with a very small light. And each night, the lights get brighter. We add a light the first day, the second day, the third day, until eight short days after the holiday began, the light is full and luminous. And then the next day, all the lights go out. Those lights, which just the night before were blazing so brightly, are suddenly completely dark. Oliver's light, Oliver's flame, seemed to just keep growing and growing and growing as he added one accomplishment after another author, computer genius, entrepreneur, triathlete, stock trader, animal lover, pilot, EMT, junior firefighter. So much light. But more than his accomplishments was just who he was. Oliver brought light to this often dark world through his compassion, his curiosity, and his kindness. He wanted to make our world fairer and easier and safer and kinder. And every single person in this room and the hundreds who are watching on Zoom knows that without a doubt, he absolutely did. He absolutely made the world a brighter and better place. Today's a day we're also asking questions. Why? How is this possible? This isn't fair. How can this be? I wish I had answers to these questions. And there is a deep and dark mystery to this loss. I imagine some of us are trying to put pieces together to analyze conversations and text messages, racking our brains to try to make some sense of this. And that's a normal response to want to know, to desperately want to understand but the illness that caused this, the hidden, desperate pain, we may never know. But what we do know is that he was surrounded by love, loving parents, loving family, loving friends, loving colleagues. And there's no mystery about that. And there's no mystery that if any of us knew that if there was something that we could have done, we would have dropped everything. We would have done anything to help. There's no mystery about that. So we are here with these questions. We're here with pain. And we're here with one another, together. Together caring for one another, 
the way Oliver would have wanted us to, the way Oliver would have cared for us in the minutes and hours and days and weeks and years ahead. Together, mourning that the light he gave us is gone so abruptly and painfully dark, but also knowing and trusting that the light that he shined illuminated something deep and real and true in each one of our hearts. And we know and trust that moving forward, it's now our task to take the light that Oliver placed in us and do our best to reflect it back into the world. And through his reflected light, to always remember him and to believe that through the power of his light, that one day the world might grow brighter once again. To help us do this work of memory and honor and care today, we're going to be hearing from Jennifer Leopold, Oliver's aunt, Jim Donahue, Oliver's uncle, Tom Leopold, grandfather, Chief K. Markivikol, who worked so closely with Oliver in the Junior Explorers Program, Chief Pollop from the Evanston Fire Department, and then Judy and Mark Sloan, and Matthew and Jennifer Savitas reading on behalf of some of Oliver's friends, followed by closing words from Mary and Alexander, and then a final prayer. Jennifer. Oh, Oliver, how many times have I said, I don't know how this works. I will have to ask Oliver. I'll jump in. Yeah, yeah. How many times have I said, I don't know how this works. I will have to ask Oliver. I could see him light up at the prospect of a new challenge. It was his true pleasure to help. Okay. Everyone who knows, knows him and many who have never met him understand what an extraordinary man he was. His accomplishments are almost unbelievable, but what I am focused on today is not his accolades, but what he valued. Being a contributing member of communities is what he loved. If you look at how Oliver spent his time and energy, it was almost always meaningful. Not a fan of downtime, he made every minute count. And we all know whatever he did, he did it with his whole heart. That's who he was, a determined and focused force. Oliver was creative, patient, analytical, curious, and above all, Oliver was kind. So I woke up in the early hours thinking once again about Oliver, and I was flooded with compassion for him. Okay, start there. And I have so many unanswered questions. The most pressing question, how did we lose Oliver, who knew he was appreciated and loved by so many, and who was earnest and passionate and engaged? Oliver, who was giving out mental health resources to patients in the hospital where he worked. And here is the answer that makes sense for me at this moment. This sweet boy, who could tackle almost anything he set his mind, set his mind to, would not want to burden anyone. After all, he was brilliant and a total pro at fixing things on his own. I believe he tried his very best to silence and push down his emotional demons, privately and without worrying any of us. And meanwhile, he threw himself into doing the things that truly made him happy. Oliver did not take his own life. Mental illness took Oliver's life. Rest in peace, Oliver. If there is such a thing as angels, then Oliver, you are most certainly now a guardian angel. May we all find peace as we heal. May we share our burdens with one another to ease the weight. May we all find in our hearts to honor Oliver by living with purpose and leaving the world a better place than we found it. Okay.
So Oliver packed so much life into his short 19 years, it's, it's hard or impossible to in, try to capture who he was in a few words, but in reflecting on his life over these last few days, a few things came to mind which were themes. Um, his intense and infectious curiosity um, and his mischievousness, um, you know, that whenever I would see his uh, his, his incredible dimples, I would, um, he would put a smile on my face and wonder, um, you know, what clever thing he was thinking. Um, we, we all know and have seen the evidence of the incredible intelligence, skills, accomplishments um, of Oliver. We can read that in his incredible obituary and, 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 and all of the things that have cataloged what he's done throughout his life. Um, but I think it, those are the products of a foundation um, of some incredible skills. He had the ability to look at the world and see things that the rest of us couldn't recognize. Um, and in, in a lot of different ways, the ability to, to, to recognize a situation um, and see how he could make it better, um, see how he could um, fix something, how he could make something um, more better in all the different ways that we've seen it. And he coupled that with the skill, tenacity, and intelligence to actually really make it happen, not just see the opportunity, but turn it into reality. One of the things that stands out to me is that it was coupled with the compassion. When you look at the things, the majority of the things that he did weren't about making him rich, or it was about fixing someone else's problem, about things that made the world around him, made the world around him better. Um, if we think about all that he accomplished and the ways that he touched all of us and the people that we don't even know in just his short 19 years, I, uh, I would have loved to have seen the things that he could accomplish in improving this world. Um, Oliver also, he resisted the pressure to conform to norms um, in the way that he thought. Um, in the way that he saw the world, in, in where he chose to focus his time and attention and skills and desire. Um, and this, this led him to, um, you know, to, um, to experience and to positively impact uh, the world around, around him with a level of diversity um, and, and variety that I don't think that I have not seen before and I don't think many or any of us have. Um, you know, I think that's evidenced by the outpouring of support that we see in this room online and, you know, online streaming today, but also in the various communications that we've seen in support and recognition of him um, over these past days and that we'll see really going forward for, you know, going forward forever, I see. Um, you know, he impacted things as a student and in his school, not just academically, but in making ETHS a better place and solving problems. His um, work and connection and fulfillment and connecting um, with the fire department and um, as an EMT and paramedic in, in the hospital and was sincere in his way of thinking about, and he developed sincere connections, um, really an engendered, I think, connections from so many others um, that are reflected in the ways that we're feeling in the outpouring that you're seeing for him. You know, I mean, some of the others of, you know, investing. I mean, also it was reflected in his um, connection to his family. Um, obviously, Alexander and Mary and Miles, but also the rest of us as well. And speaking with my kids, my daughter um, 
pointed out that he didn't take no for an answer. He was very resolute in his opinions once he formed them. Um, and when Alexander and Mary said no to buying an ambulance, he goes and buys a fire truck. <laughs> who, who does that? Um, I can just imagine those dimples as he was, you know, as he was making the purchase. Um, you know, I, um, he also approached the interest in his endeavors with a, a principle and a discipline and a tenacity and a determination and efficiency that allowed him, as I said before, to not only recognize opportunities in ways that we don't, but to turn them into action um, and to have a plan to do so. He had a plan for everything. Um, and understanding that about him is part of what makes it so hard to accept and understand the choices and decisions that put us in the position we're in today. Um, we all could see the life and the promise uh, for the future um, that was there for Oliver and what he could accomplish. Tragically, with all of his remarkable intelligence, compassion, and skill, it seems that he had the challenge um, seeing the future that lay ahead of him in the same, with the same clarity that it existed for all of us. Um, in his short life, Ale Oliver um, accomplished so much and connected with and contributed to the world um, in ways that have brought us all here to get today. What I believe or what I know um, will define his legacy, however, is not his choices over the past week, but the gifts that he has provided to us through the example he's given through the entirety of his life. His influence on us and the world does not end with his death. I'm a little pissed off at him now, but I'm so proud of my nephew. Oliver, we love you. We love you dearly and we'll miss you. And we'll try to live up of the example that you set for us in the high bar with the way that you lived the entirety of your life. And we'll be there to support your family. Thank you. <laughs> I invite Tom Leopold to share a few words. I guess I can take the mask off. <clears throat> Friday, <clears throat> I wrote a, a, a eulogy, and sa Saturday read over Oliver's obituary. I quickly realized that it said much better than I could his extraordinary accomplishments, uh, so many of which we've heard and read about, uh, so I won't go into those. So I had to reboot. <clears throat> May I share a special bond we, we had, which was the stock market. When Oliver was about 12 years old, he wrote a, a newsletter on such matters. And we all read it with great enthusiasm. At about the same time, I took him to Zuckerman Investment Group, our investment advisor. Oliver attended in coat and tie and a briefcase. They gave a presentation on a large screen, and Oliver savored every minute of it. He even asked some questions 
and gave some opinions. Twelve years old. As the years flew by, the two of us had, a numer had numerous discussions on specific stocks and strategies. Oliver's vision and quick learning were just absolutely incredible. I even bought a I even bought a few of his recommendations, which were very successful, but I sold them a little too soon. <laughs> none, of us, none of us will ever comprevent, comprehend the events of last week, but he will forever imprint our lives as we honor this remarkable young man. Rest in peace. I want to invite Chief K. Markivical, with whom Oliver shared a special bond. Hi, Megan. Uh, I knew Oliver through the Explorer program, which is a youth program uh, through Evanston Fire Department. Um, obviously, the last few days have been extremely difficult. Um, and I had a friend send me a quote. Uh, it says, when you find yourself weeping for what you have lost, remember that you're weeping for someone who blessed you with joy. How lucky we are to have known such a wonderful person. This quote is true and fitting with Oliver. I know I speak on behalf of myself, but I'm quite certain I can speak on behalf of everyone who knew him. We are so lucky to have him in our lives. The term wonderful certainly describes Oliver, but he was so much more. I personally found him hilarious, <laughs> uh, but he had this charisma and this kindness about him that was just absolutely contagious. Every time I saw him, literally every time I saw him, he instantly put a smile on my face, usually because I knew I was about to get some witty or goofy comment. <laughs> um, as I said, I first met Oliver when he came to register with the Explorer program uh, with his dad, and he was only 13, this tiny little, little kid. He was so geeked up, though, about the fire service. <laughs> and I've since had the true pleasure of working with him uh, as both an explorer and as a friend. <clears throat> Throughout the years, he's certainly kept me on my toes. Uh, he would send just subtle gestures to make sure I sent reminder emails about the upcoming meetings. <laughs> these, usually, these usually included a video text with him driving past the fire station and waving, or saying hello with just enthusiasm. And then at, right at the end of it, you would just say, don't forget to send the email. <laughs> um, I had asked him to come up with some activities for the explorers. And of course, within a few days, he uh, went and developed an entire training schedule for the next year, uh, some of which were a little extravagant. They included some scuba diving, <laughs> driving the rescue Zodiac boat, <laughs> and jumping out of helicopters. <laughs> um, he would show up to emergency scenes. Uh, at first, he would ride his bike there, and he would always try to get there before the first in engine. Sometimes he succeeded. Uh, but truly, he brought so much positive energy to our program, and he truly was a natural leader. He made everyone laugh and just feel very included. He obviously made friends very easy, and he had such a positive impact on everyone he met. Um, anytime I, his name was mentioned at Evanston High School or the fire department, all the members, everyone would say, he's such a great person, and it truly was. I do think the most surprising news I received from Oliver, though, was when he called and told me he bought Evanston Fire Department's reserve aerial truck. <laughs> I said, you did what? 
and then just started laughing. And I said, of course you did. Um, and of course, he had everything lined up. He had his insurance, his storage, his upkeep. The only problem was he couldn't drive it. <laughs> so he got his permit, and I, along with Howie here, were one of the lucky ones to take him to practice. And as terrifying as that first experience was, <laughs> I looked over, and I couldn't be more proud to see this grown young man who was no longer a kid, who could work an aerial ladder, who followed his heart, he challenged any norms, and he was and will continue to be a true inspiration. And while the Explorer program may have been a small component of his life, he certainly made a huge impact on all the other Explorers, our department members, and the program overall. So thank you. Thank you. Chief Pollock from the Emerson Fire Department. Good afternoon. My name is Paul Pollock. Uh, <clears throat> Fire Chief of the Evanston Fire Department. So it's with great sadness I stand in front of you today. Our department had the fortunate opportunity to be introduced to Oliver Leopold about five years ago through our Fire Explorer program. Fire Explorer program is aimed at teens <clears throat> and young adults started by Captain Kim Archivico about eight years ago. This program allows minds who are, young minds who are interested in the fire service to come together and train as professional firefighters, doing things such as crawling down long hallways with smoke-filled atmospheres with an air pack, um, roadway extrication, using the jaws of life, water rescue, all of these things. And I'm sorry for breaking up Oliver Mental quite a bit. <clears throat> OK. So um, <laughs> anyway, so as I said, we met Oliver five years ago. And uh, once Oliver had a taste of being this first responder, he never looked back. And, that, and we knew he was hooked immediately. Not only do the fire explorers train in professional atmospheres, but they also train professionally with the community. Um, the explorers are often asked and tasked to do multiple occasions with the community such events as street fairs, art fests, cook-offs, and um, such as the Evanston Fire Department open house. They're also asked to participate with large-scale training events, such as the Northwestern Hazardous Material Mitigation that we do every year. Oliver was always the first volunteer, and not just volunteer, but made it fun for the other explorers, and just brought a smile to everyone's face where they wanted to be there. <clears throat> Oliver was the face and the smile to any new explorer walking into the program. When you have that uncomfortable feeling, you look at Oliver, it's all going to be good. <clears throat> this is the good one. So as Oliver became more senior with the group and really understanding our job, he started showing up to our actual fire scenes to observe, learn, because why not? Oliver can't do anything, just train. You know, he's got to be involved, and he, he needs to make a difference. Such to the point where, as I would respond to emergency incidents, I knew I was going to see a green Volkswagen bug on the side of the road somewhere with this young kid with this enthusiastic smile wanting to help. <laughs> so when I would see that, I figured, well, he may as well be part of our group. So I'd have him come over to the command car and put him to work. I'd look over, he'd, he'd look at me with his smile. So I'd go, well, you just gonna stand there? And he'd come run it over. <laughs> and he'd be like, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, just 
write down everything you hear on the radio. Well, it's Oliver, right? He didn't miss an ounce of radio traffic. He knew where our crews were. He knew when NICOR was going to be there. He knew when the Red Cross was going to be there. But he always knew when I would miss radio traffic from command because he'd say, Chief, command dispatch is calling you. Want me to answer? Because he wanted to get on the radio. I'm like, no, Oliver, give me the radio. He's like, come on, Chief. So it was a fight. He'd be sitting next to me in my car and we're trying to run a house fire, and he's arguing with me. So then it would come to the point of he sent me a proposal to what's stating the Illinois State Vehicle Code for him to have a blue light in the green bug so he can respond to scenes faster to be more effective to our administration and in the, in the incident. So of course I picked this up and I look at it and my God, I start laughing, it's Oliver, and I put it down and I'm like, wait, he's serious. He, he really wants to do this. So I look at it again, I'm like, no, I, I, I can't do this. this this would not be good for the residents of Evanston, this green bug driving around with a blue light. Can't do that. And as, um, as I personally learned more about Oliver, I was extremely impressed with his enthusiasm, his drive, his curiosity. If he saw a way to make something better, he surely would. And uh, if he saw a way to make something better, you can bet that he was going to do that. An example is Oliver worked with Chief Brian Scott, Captain Megan Kamer Chief on an uh, application that we have in all of our first responder vehicles with, on our iPads. This organizes important data that we need for emergency incidents. And I know this app makes a difference in the fire service because anytime the app goes down, firefighters are calling the battalion chiefs to get the platform back up and running. And that's saying a lot for firefighters when they want something up and running. But more importantly aside, from all that, <clears throat> Oliver was family. He was a friend, and he was a professional before even being a professional. Oliver had a smile that would change the room. This young man will truly be missed by so many. And to Oliver, the Evanston Fire Department, we'd like to thank you for your service. I told myself I wasn't going to do this and everything you've done for us. So for now, the Evanston Fire Department is going to mark you as 10-8 out of service. The Evanston Fire Department is going to mark you 10-8 out of service. Until we meet again, buddy. Speaking on behalf of some of Oliver's friends, I want to welcome Judy and Mark Sloan, followed by Jennifer and Mark Savitas. We're going to read some remarks from Oliver's friends. on behalf of Natalie Long, one of Oliver's closest friends who couldn't be here today. She wanted to share some of her favorite memories of Oliver. First is the first time I had a conversation with him. Back in middle school, Oliver was known as the famous YouTuber. I always knew who he was, but we never crossed paths until one day during Haven Help Us. Oliver was on stage crew and I was in the cast. Every year we had a girls dance. 
Because of practice for sports, I was one of four girls who wasn't in the dance. During our rehearsal week, I decided to attempt to watch the dance. I walked up to the door backstage and Oliver opened it to let me in. I told him I wanted to see the dance and he snuck me in to see. Of course, not 10 seconds later, I got kicked out for not having the black shirt, but I will never ever forget that moment, not realizing that would spark us into the amazing friendship we had. My next story is the day we attempted to become vloggers. As many of you know, Oliver already had great YouTube success, from his how to fix a Chromebook video to trying the Beyond Burger. He just posted whatever his passion was in that moment. At this point in time, his passion was David Dobrik. We took a camera to his lime green bug and had a list of topics. I don't even remember half of them, but there were definitely something about aliens in there. We went driving probably for about 30 minutes until the camera died. He pulled over and was putting in a new battery when he realized the camera was never recording. <laughs> After some frustration and realizing this might not be our calling, we decided to record a little more on the way home. I didn't really know why because I had to be home in 10 minutes and we already lost 30 minutes of footage but I, let, I went along with it. Of course, being the prankster he was, he had a plan. Oliver took out a syringe of saline he stole from work and squirted me with it. Even though I went home soaked, that is and will always be one of my favorite memories with Oliver. My final story is my favorite walk with Oliver. On a Monday in April, Oliver and I got tired of our usual Evanston walks and decided to go to the Forest Preserve. We ended up walking for around two hours just talking about life, weird conspiracy theories, and pretty much anything you can think of. After our long trek, we decided it'd be best to loop back, except once we hit the end of the trail, walking back looked like it would be about 30 minutes, and we were both already extremely tired. There we were, sitting on the side of Golf Road, debating what to do. Us being the smart chem fizzers we were, decided it would be a great idea to walk on the side of the busy road to the nearby country club and ask our friend for a ride. Even though we weren't the smartest cookies in the jar that day, the memories we made on that walk will stick with me forever. I never realized how close we were until that day. I've never been so comfortable around someone like I was with Oliver. I could tell him anything and everything and he would know exactly what to say back. Whether it was a funny joke, or the perfect time to embarrass me, he knew exactly how to make me smile. I don't think I'll ever truly be able to call someone my best friend after having Oliver as mine. I will be reading the words on behalf of my daughter, Gabriella, or as her friends call her, Gabby. I was always jealous of Oliver. The way he could think of something is so cool that the next day he goes out and does it. Like buying a fire truck or making an app just for fun going to paramedic school or driving to New York just cause he wanted a real New York City Fire Department shirt, which I am wearing today along with our matching Evanston Fire Department sweatshirts. Oliver's drive and curiosity amazed me, and I grew to start trying to be more like him. Oliver had the ability to make friends with anyone. I was always so jealous of his connection with so many firefighters in the Evanston Fire Department. Oliver and I rarely talked about anything other than fires. Our EMT work, cool app ideas, where to keep a 41-foot fire truck, or Megan, sorry, Megan. A huge part of my life came from Oliver's passion and love that grew from the Fire Explorers program. Oliver would pick me up bright and early in the morning while he stood outside my house making TikToks about how I was late after I promised him I wouldn't be late. And when bored, 
we'd randomly show up to fire stations to bother our favorite firefighters. If we were driving in his little, green, in his little neon green bug and we heard a call come in on his radio that we all made fun of, for, of fun of him for having, we'd open YouTube, click fire truck sirens, and be on our way. <laughs> I'd like to say Oliver's biggest flex was showing up to a scene before the fire department and being in a group chat with the chief. <laughs> One of my favorite memories is from when we were at a station late at night cleaning our gear. Oliver spotted a really cool Evanston Fire Department shirt in the corner of the bay and told me he was going to ask Megan if he could have it. And before he got the chance, I rushed over to her and asked if I could have the shirt. <laughs> she said yes, and the look of defeat on his face made me laugh so hard because I finally won something against him. Although at first, he made us have shared custody of the shirt where he actually created a contract that he made me sign, and in the end, he let me keep the shirt. <laughs> Oliver, Oliver pushed me to be who I am today without knowing it. Multiple times a week, I'd get texts of pictures of him doing IVs on doctors or a voice memo about a story of how he intubated a patient. We were on our journey together. And my passion for firefighting and medicine grew from having him by my side. This past week, I wasn't sure if I could move forward with such a huge part of my life because it was something that we did together and encouraged each other along the way. Oliver, I remember one of the first and very few serious conversations we had. I told you how I admired your work ethic and that if you wanted to do something, you went out and did it. It was inspiring. Although my love for firefighting and medicine was so deeply rooted in our friendship, continuing along my path, I know I will always have you with me. Every fire truck or engine that passed by on the road, I always thought of Oliver. When I heard sirens pass my house, I'd always text to ask what the call was. Whenever I wear the Evanston Fire Department shirt, which I got fair and square, I'll think of all of our funny memories together. Whenever I accomplished something, thought of or saw, or saw something cool, Oliver would be the first I texted, and none of that will change. Oliver, thank you for being a role model, honest advice giver, free spirit, goofy, and an encouraging friend to me. Love you always, Gabby. Now I'd like to read the words of Evan Burns, friend of Oliver. My fondest memory of Oliver was when we got bored one weekend and we went to the Tesla dealership. He always loved Teslas and seeing him so happy to get the Tesla experience made my day. I will always cherish sitting in a Tesla, watching him adjust the mirrors and dream about one day owning one of the cars himself. 
Oliver was a dreamer. What made him so special is that no matter what he set his mind to, he achieved. Oliver motivated me to work hard and become a better person because of the impact he had on others. Watching him make a difference in the world made my heart so full. His selflessness and dedication were unparalleled. Oliver was such a kind soul. He made every single day I spent with him better. Oliver made high school a fun time by making the most mundane, mundane things fun. We would always wander the halls together between classes, cracking jokes, and visiting old teachers and friends. Even on my worst days, hearing his voice made me smile. Oliver brought people together. Oliver was the most talented person I've ever met. I always knew he would do something that changed people's lives. And in the short time he was with us, he managed to change the lives of so many. From working on the front lines of the pandemic to, des to designing the ETHS Bell, Oliver made impacts on both a large and a small scale. In four short years, Oliver managed to become an ETHS icon. And when I talk to people from ETHS, the first thing everyone remembers is Oliver coming on the announcements in the morning to wish everyone a good day. He was adored by everyone, from those who met him once to Dr. Witherspoon and everyone else in between. I don't think I can put into words how much Oliver means to me. And when I think of him, I'm filled with wonder. He achieved so much, he inspired so many. His memory will always guide me. I was moved by something Terry Gatchell, our former teacher, had to say. In the words of Mrs. Gatchell, every time I would hear a siren in Evanston, I would think about Oliver and smile. I guess I always will now. And I encourage everyone to do the same. I will remember Oliver's incredible life and smile back on the good times we had. And I know, he, I know his guiding presence will never leave me. These are the words that were written by Nikki Levy. Oliver, you were one of my favorite people. It was so easy for you to make me happy and laugh. If I ever needed help fixing my phone or computer, I would immediately text you and instantly receive a solution, even though you would always laugh at how easy it was. <laughs> On the last day of Hebrew before COVID, you somehow found a way to supplement all of the coursework for one presentation of Hala, probably by somehow using your charm on someone. Or you would run to class and give me an encore of your morning announcements you did five minutes before. <laughs> Over the summer, when us and Gabby drove to get frozen yogurt, you detailed every step of your plan to buying your own fire truck. We thought you were crazy. I don't know any person that would get a group of firefighters to show up at their high school graduation on their front lawn to congratulate them. My stories could go on forever. Everyone can agree that you are the most unique person and proud of it. It made being around you such an experience and it is the reason why every person in Evanston can attest to some positive interaction or relationship with you. I will forever cherish these memories I have with you. I am so proud of everything you accomplished these past 19 years, especially since many adults haven't even gotten close to achieving as much as you. You were truly an inspiration. Thank you for everything and for being such an incredible friend to me. You were such an amazing personal cheerleader and supporter. I will always miss you, your smile, and the light that you brought into every room.
During the last couple of days, we sent one message through the channels of social media and have been bombarded with Oliver's friends wanting to share words, memories, quotes, or a story about him. We printed all of them out and have put them in this binder, which we are honored to present to you today. In this book are amazing comments, memories, quotes, stories, or just a few words about Oliver in the hope that they provide you and your family a little peace. The common theme that we see in the many dozens and dozens of letters and quotes is that Oliver was an inspiration to so many people. May his love for others, his genuine smile, his passion, and his inspiration continue to be a blessing for all of us. <laughs> oh. There are no words. That is what we all say. What can we do? That is what we all ask. This. This is what you do. Please keep doing this. Just this. I don't mean all the food and the flowers and keeping the bar stocked. I mean, just sit and hold our hands and let me embrace you. During the most horrific, sorry, during the most horrific moment of my life, the firefighters did just this. They held me, enfolded me, held my hand, cried with me. They said, Oliver is our family. Our gratitude is unspeakable. I truly love every one of you here, as did Oliver. This is not hyperbole. Thursday morning started with the embrace of the first responders and has continued with your embrace. Thank you beyond words. I need, I need to correct the record in a couple places. There was a trip to New York last year to pick up a special magic firefighter <laughs> coat that was available online, but he brought me with him. And because of COVID, we couldn't fly, so we drove. We left Friday afternoon at 1, and we were back in Evanston by 9 AM Sunday morning <laughs> to get this special coat. <laughs> And yes, he, he, he went to many fires, but so did I. He had more than one radio. He had more than one radio in the house, squawking, squawking. And he would scream. He'd start shouting, house fire, house fire, house fire. 
and, and we had it down. We, we were out of the, the house within 30 seconds and in the car and out by a minute. So I, I, I and the, the, the fire department asked if they could bring a fire truck. And they brought a fire truck that's outside. It's smaller than Oliver's. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver bought an 11 and a half foot tall, 40 foot long <laughs> fire truck with a 50 foot ladder. It's longer than a school bus. Isn't it a 150 foot ladder? No, Is it a 150 no. foot ladder? 65 Big. foot ladder. And he was scared of heights, so he would never <clears throat> climb that ladder. I want to thank each of you in this room and joining us virtually, as well as many who could not be with us today. We feel supported and comforted by your presence. Having you here makes this a bit... Having you, you all here makes this a bit less painful, and for that we are grateful. Oliver was a remarkable human being, and in so many ways, a better person than I. Mary and I have said since he was in second grade that our parenting style has been to follow his lead and to do what we were told. <laughs> and, and we did. He gets credit for it all. Thank you. conclude our service today with a memorial prayer in Hebrew than in English and following that we'll recite the mourners Kaddish a prayer of community and of togetherness first the Kelmale you can find the English translation which we'll read in your pamphlet El Malay Rahamim Shochein Bamromim Amse Minucha Nechona Al Kanfeyash Kina Bemalot Kiroshimu Teorim Kezawar Rakia Mazirim Met Nishmat Oliver Ben Alexander Vimeri Shalach le olamo, Babush ananu, no dreams to taka, but ask her at Nishmato. Began aliens at Hemenu Hato, Lachain Balarachamim, Yassi, very beserk nafav le olamim. Vitor betorachim in Nishmato, Adonayu nachalato, Vienuach beshalam amishkavo, Venomar, Amen. O God, full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence, among the holy and pure who shine as bright as the firmament of the sun, unto the soul of Oliver Brown Leopold, who has gone unto eternity. Lord of mercy, bring him under the cover of thy wings and let his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be God's possession and may his rest be peace. Amen. Now, if everyone wishes to rise, and we'll respond as Mary and Alexander recite the Mourner's Kaddish. We can recite it together. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shemei rabba b'alma divrach Yute Viam Lich Mahute Bechaye Hon Uviome Hon Bechaye de Hol Beit Israel Bagala Visman Kariv Vimru Amen Yehe Shmei Raba Vivarach Veolam Omeo Maya Yibarach
This concludes the funeral service here at the chapel. The family requested for the of flowers for those who want to make a good contribution in all of his memory to the Evanston Police and Fire, Fire Foundation. That address is on our website. For those that are watching on our website, that address is there. And there's also envelopes available as you depart. Please rise as the family leaves the chapel. Once the family has left the chapel, you may return to your cars.